Growing up in Colombia, a neotropical country, I was always fascinated by the diversity of plant forms surrounding my childhood home. My curiosity about plant life has stayed with me for all of my life. And I was struck when I moved to New York to discover that one of the most common species here, Ginkgo biloba, which is planted all over Fifth Avenue, hasn't changed in more than 300 million years. It is what scientists call a living fossil. But what has allowed Ginkgo to thrive for such a long expanse of time? And what makes a Ginkgo seed so different from a tomato seed or a mustard seed? My research is focused on the genes involved in seed formation in order to better understand the diversity of seed shapes and how these are formed. It turns out that plants with seeds appeared over 300 million years ago, even before dinosaurs, and they continued to thrive long after their extinction. Indeed, seed plants not only survived, but they also became the most abundant plant lineage on Earth. My research is focused on the seeds of this living fossil, Ginkgo biloba, and the genes involved in its formation, specifically those involved in a particular and crucial part of the seed, the seed coat. The seed coat protects the embryo and keeps it vital for long periods so that a new life cycle begins again for a new plant. To understand these developmental processes, scientists have developed systems used as models. So similar to how in animals, eh, mice and fruit flies are often used as models, in plant studies, Arabidopsis is the model species, which belongs to the mustard family. Studies in Arabidopsis reveal the genes involved in seed formation. So taking as reference those genes that we already know I began to search them in other species with very different seed morphologies, like ginkgo, the yew tree, and two different ephedra species, one with fleshy seeds and the other one with dry seeds. My initial research into those specific genes has left me with more questions than answers, as the genetics behind the seed is very complex and it doesn't seem to be uniform across all seed plants. So I decided to take a different approach. Instead of using Arabidopsis as a research starting point, I began to search for the specific genes in the species of interest for my research. To achieve this goal, I sequenced separately the different parts of the seed in order to try to find the genes, the, the specific gene sequences that make the singularity of these uh, seeds. As the climate evolves at a speed faster than expected, plants will have to adapt. Most likely, seeds will have to germinate and grow under very harsh, harsh conditions on dry and nutrient-poor soils. Understanding the basis of seed development will not only be very satisfactory for the simple pleasure of knowledge, pleasure that nourish all scientists, but it will also provide us with the framework for successfully troubleshoot many of the problems that we're already facing due to climate change.